Hey friends, uh, let's read back through and talk more about and think more about our story, which was about the super cute koala. So our story was called Koala Lou, and it was written by Mem Fox, and it was illustrated by Pamela Locks. There once was a baby koala, so soft and round that all who saw her loved her. Her name was Koala Lou. Look at how cute she is, a little baby. The emu loved her, the platypus loved her, and even tough little koala claws next door loved her. But it was her mother who loved her most of all. A hundred times a day, she would laugh and shake her head and say, Koala Lou, I do love you. Do you think that her mother really says a hundred times a day she loves her? Like 100 times? You guys can count to 100 for your calendar and working towards the 100 state of school. Do you think her mother says that 100 times a day? Or do you think they're just exaggerating a little bit? Yeah, we don't actually know, but I'm going to guess they're exaggerating just a little bit. But she's trying, the author is trying to tell us her mother says it a lot. Whenever she stretched early in the morning sun or climbed up a gum tree or bravely went down the path all by herself, her mother would smile and say, Koala Lou, I do love you. I want to look at that sentence. Um, so first of all, in Writer's Workshop and, uh, well, yeah, in Writer's Workshop mostly, we've talked about adding dialogue. I've talked about this in our videos before that conversation in our writing. One of the most important things that you should be looking for to know that it's dialogue or conversation are these little marks ah, right up here. Those two little dashed lines, let's move in closer. Those two little dashed lines up at the top of the letter and then down at the other end, those are called quotation marks. So whenever you see those around some words, those little, some people do this in the air, quotation marks, good. That means inside those two marks, it's like a, a hug to keep it in. That's what that person or character is saying. And it even says, it says her mother would say, and then the words that come inside are what she said. Koalu, I do love you. So whenever I see those quotation marks, I know someone is talking. That's that dialogue, good. Also wanted to point out, why are these letters different? They're pretty small, but I can tell, you should be able to tell, they're different. Those are capital letters or uppercase, uppercase letters, good. And it's the word, let's see, I know that word is I, so that's the word I, do, D-O, do. Why is the word do in uppercase letters and then all the other letters are in lowercase? Why might the author choose to put the word do in uppercase and everything else in lowercase? Um, when you put letters in uppercase, that's another way for the author to show excitement. Or sometimes people just say it's yelling when you see uppercase letters. So when I read through that sentence, I always kind of raise my voice when I say the word do. So can, see if you can try and do that with me. Ready? Koala Lou, I do love you. Awesome. So let's pay attention to that on the next coming pages because we know we see it a few more times. The years passed and other koalas were born, brothers and sisters for Koala Lou. Soon her mother was so busy she didn't have time to tell Koala Lou that she loved her. Although, of course she did. So even though Koala Lou, she, Koala Lou knows her mother loves her, she her mother doesn't always have time to tell her. Look at how they're trying to show how busy she is. Oh, I didn't even notice. There's another little koala on her back. So there's one, two, another one hanging up her belly, three, four, five others. So yeah, it's no wonder Koala Lou feels a little maybe left out or what are some other words how she might be feeling? Mom doesn't have time to tell her she loves her anymore. How does she feel? Nice job, you guys. Good words. Every night as she curled up under the stars, Koala Lou thought about the times when her mother had looked at her and said, Koala Lou, I do love you. And she longed for her to say it again. One night, Koala Lou had a splendid idea. Preparations had begun for the Bush Olympics. Oh, okay. There's another uppercase word. 
she would enter the Olympics. She would compare, she would compete in the gum tree climbing event and she would win and her mother would fling her arms around her neck and say again, Koala Lou, I do love you. Koala Lou began her training right away. She jogged and puffed and lifted weights and painted. She hung from a branch with one claw at a time until she ached. She did push-ups till her stomach hurt. And last of all, she climbed the tallest tree that she could find over and over and over again. I love all these pictures. They're kind of silly to me because she's training. So she's wearing sneakers, even though animals don't wear shoes. So it's pretty funny to see how hard she's working and exhausted. <laughs> Sometimes her mother would watch her and ask, how are you going, Blossom? Fine, just fine, Koala Lou would reply. At last, the day of the Bush Olympics arrived. Oh, I didn't notice this before. Um, raise your hand if you have ever watched real Olympics on the TV. Um, sometimes I can't think of the last Olympics there were, but there were some in Italy and in China. And once upon a time, there was some in our, um, in the United States too, in Lake Placid. But anyways, when they start the Olympics, whether it's winter or summer, they start, um, a fire or a torch usually to start it. So I didn't notice that these animals were doing something similar to it with their little sticks on fire here. And that's how they start the Olympics. They light the torch and commence it to start. So. It's funny that they're trying to pretend to do that too. And all the spectators over here. Koala Claus had also entered the gum tree climbing event and everyone knew how fast she was, but Koala Lou wasn't scared. She was, she saw her mother in the crowd and imagined her saying again, Koala Lou, I do love you. Her heart filled with hope. Ah, look at her, she's like, you got it, mom, I'm okay. It was Koala Claus who went first. Her climb was a record breaking 22 meters and 70 seconds flat. The spectators whistled and cheered and wildly waved their party hats. <laughs> Look at Koala Claus at the top is going, yeah. Silly. Can I do better than that? Wondered Koala Lou. I must. As she stepped towards the tree, a hush fell over the crowd. On your mark, said the kookaburra. Get set. Go. Oh. Koala Lou leapt onto the tree. Up and up and up she climbed. Higher and higher and higher. Faster and faster and faster until there she was, right at the very top. The spectators roared and clapped and stamped their feet. I think I just made another text to text connection. When I heard that word stamped their feet, do you remember another character in an old favorite storybook that stamped his feet? Who did that? It was the peddler in caps for sale. When he was trying to get those monkeys, he stamped his feet. So that just made me think of that. That was a text to text or a book to book connection. Nice job, friends. But she wasn't fast enough. In spite of her training and all of her hoping, it was Koala Claus who won the gum tree climbing. Koala Lou came in second. Koala Lou went off and hid. She heard the shouts of the Bush Olympics and cried her heart out. Wow. She must be really sad. When the first stars of the evening appeared in the sky, Koala Lou crept home through the dark and up into the gum tree. Her mother was waiting for her. Before she could say a word, her mother had flung her arms around her neck and said, Koala Lou, I do love you. I always have and I always will. And she hugged her for a very long time. 
So how did Koala Lou feel at the beginning of this page? She was, it says that she crept home in the darkness. What does it mean if she crept home in the darkness? She sprinted, she skipped all happy, or she crept home. Crept home is kind of like a sneaky, like sad, doesn't want anyone to notice her all by herself. But her mama was accepting of her no matter what, and mama gave her a hug. And now how does Koala Lou feel? Yeah, I bet you that raised her spirits a little bit, made her heart warmer and just knows that she can still be proud of herself or that no matter what, her mama still loves her. The end. Nice reading today. See you back tomorrow.